Good morning. Welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today, in celebration of reaching 100 patrons, I'm doing a vlog where my patrons get to control my day. So yesterday I put up a bunch of polls that they responded to. And a lot I of calls? A lot of calls? Polls. As I was saying, I put up a bunch of polls yesterday and uh, a couple of them I'm leaving running because they're pretty close and I don't need them for late till later in the day, but um, patrons are controlling everything I do with my day to day. So I'm going to start by getting dressed. I asked them what I should wear and the answer was definitely dark academia vibes so i'm gonna put together a dark academia type outfit for the day before we do that i guess i should also tell you that they picked what audiobook i should be listening to throughout the day and it was the last tale of the flower bride by roshni chakshi which i have the audiobook from libra fm thank you to them and uh yeah i'm kind of excited to check it out this was far and away the pick like more than 50% of people voted for this. So clearly everyone is interested. I'm interested too. I'm curious to see what her first adult book is like. So I will be listening to that today. I'm going to put on my headphones and start listening while I get dressed. Okay, so I have kind of a the dark academia look going. I'll show the completed look after I do my makeup. Patrons got to vote on which eyeshadow palette I use, and they picked this Natasha Denona palette. So here are the colors we're working with. Obviously, I'm going to go with more kind of neutral tones. It, you know, we want to go with the look, but uh, yeah, I think this will work out. Let's go ahead and do my makeup. So I had already moisturized my face. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Illuminate Glow Primer I had a sample of that I like. Maybe I'll buy it in full size later. And then I'm gonna do, I do a CC cream by IT Cosmetics. Your skin but better CC Illumination is my go-to. I like kind of medium coverage because I don't know. Uh, full coverage is usually too much for me. So I started listening to The Last Flower Bride and so far I like it. It's kind of creepy. It's got gothic vibes. It's being narrated by a guy who fell in love with this kind of strange mysterious woman. They got married. Weird stuff's going on. It's interesting because it feels a little bit like a reversal of something like the Blackbeard story where, you know, usually it's the the innocent wife who's sort of going into the creepy house where the husband has secrets. And this is kind of reversing it, drawing on different like fairy tale motifs and stuff. So far I like it. It's pretty good. Like sensitive over here because I had done the work done. Eyeshadow primer from Fenty Beauty. I know this is kind of broken, I need to buy a new one, but it's the Pixie Natural Brow Duo. It's relatively affordable and I like it. So it's got like a little pencil part on this side and a gel on the other side. I know everybody likes to like fluff their brows up. I just, I don't know. It's uncomfortable to me and I just don't, it's not my favorite. So I do what I do. For contour, I have Danessa Myrick's Beauty. It's a cream contour, which I prefer, and I just use my fingertips, cheekbones. You want to start in your hairline and kind of blend it out. Some people do like a lot of contour. I don't. Sometimes I'll do a little bit up at my forehead. Just kind of blend it a little bit under the jawline. I don't always do this, but sometimes. I know some people do their noses. I'm fine with my nose. And then this thing is coming apart, but I uh, got a blush from Kaja Beauty. It's like a K-Beauty brand. I like this concept, but it just like, it broke really fast, which is less than ideal. Then I've got highlighter from Fenty Beauty in Starstruck. It's like a stick, so you just swipe it on where you want it, blend it out. I like to use my fingertip to apply the shimmer part. Kind of packs it on better than using a brush. I do brush for more matte colors. Big fluffy brush for like a more neutral shade here. Oh, and I forgot about this. I have like a 
blemish. We need a little bit of concealer on that. All right, keep going. Also, the concealer I use is Bye Bye Under Eye by It Cosmetics, which I like. A matte neutral shade here. I really like these eyeshadows, but the only downside is they don't have a good highlighter shade. So I'm gonna have to go to another palette for that. Next is eyeliner. I've got the NYX Epic Ink Liner, which I like. Mascara is this Cali Ray Come Heller High Water. It's like a clean mascara that I like pretty well. Not that the word clean is super regulated, but you know. I know a lot of people like to do powder. My skin is kind of dry and doesn't usually react well to it, so I don't often do it. I am, however, gonna use a setting spray. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Spray. And then for a lip, I've got this liquid lip from Bare Minerals that I've been liking in the shade Spirited. It's a little too bright for this look, so I'm gonna add Kat Von D Homegirl lipstick, which is like a dark purple on top. That is much better. Okay, so this is the finished makeup look using the Natasha Denona palette. So I went ahead and made one of my shorts of the fit in the book and see how the complete look turned out, but I'm pretty happy with it. And I am ready for some breakfast. I am hungry. I'm definitely ready to eat breakfast. And patrons got to vote on where I was gonna go. And the thing that won was a place with amazing banana bread. I'm excited because this is among my favorite breakfast restaurants. I really like their breakfast and they do have really delicious homemade banana bread. So. Let's go out and get some breakfast. Packing up to go, and I wanted to share because patrons also got to vote on which physical book I should bring along to read, and the winner was The Terraformers by Annalie Newitz, which I haven't started yet, but I have it for a review this month, and it looks great. It's from a queer non-binary author, and it is sci-fi that sounds pretty awesome. So I'm excited to start that while I'm out today, and I have a nice little book sleeve to protect it in my bag. For breakfast, I headed over to Banter NYC, read a little bit of Terraformers, and had this delicious protein-rich breakfast with a side of banana bread. I couldn't finish all of it. It was a lot of food. But this was so good and had me perfectly fueled up for a big day. Guys, seriously, if you get a chance to try their house-made banana bread, it is delicious. Seriously, they have some of the best banana bread. I have some taken with me for later, but... Now we're going to do a couple of things. I need a little bit more coffee. Patrons got to vote on what kind of coffee I should get. So I need to find a Starbucks. They voted for an iced shaken espresso with brown sugar. And I think I'm going to find one on our way to our first full location of the day. I thought, you know, we're in New York. Let's do a cultural thing. And so here were all of the options. There were a lot of them that they could vote on. But the winner was the Morgan Library, which I'm very excited about because I've never had a chance to go. It was closed for part of COVID and it's now open. So I'm going to head in that direction and then find a Starbucks to pick up a coffee on my way to the Morgan Library. Let's go. I took the subway to Herald Square, which was the closest stop to the Morgan Library, and I successfully found a Starbucks. I hung out and drank my coffee for a while, read a little bit more of Terraformers. This is really good. It's their oat milk shaken brown sugar espresso, and I get it with like one pump of the brown sugar. It's really good. I made it to the Morgan Library. I can't believe this was my first time going because oh my god it was so cool so gorgeous looking at all of these books was just incredible I like doing a photo shoot here would be amazing but this library y'all oh my god it was also interesting because I learned a little bit about the first person who managed the collection who was actually a black woman that books have been written about you'll see them a little bit later in the video look at this room y'all it's like Bell's Library, almost not quite as good, but almost. I desperately want something like this. Wouldn't it be amazing? It was so fun to walk around and just see all the different titles of the books. And 
One thing that I found really entertaining is, you know, people like to make fun of people like me and others of us who collect multiple copies of our favorite books as if we don't need them. I kid you not, I found a shelf in this room, and I'll sh I'll tell you when we get there, but it was the entire shelf was just one book that must have been a favorite of Morgan, the guy who owned it. Let's see if we're there yet. I think we almost are, but it was all Robinson Crusoe titles. Here we go. Here's the Robinson Crusoe. You can see it. Now we're going to pull back and look at this photograph. All of those are copies of Robinson Crusoe, different languages, different editions. So don't come for us. <laughs> anyway, this was really interesting too about the first known female author. And Belle Green is the black woman I was telling you about. Her family passed as white, but she was a librarian. All right, I am done at the Morgan Library. I had an amazing time. It's beautiful. And I was so glad that this got me to finally go. I went to the gift shop and found a a birthday present for a friend that is forthcoming, but I'm not gonna show you. So it is almost one, but I have such a big late breakfast. I am not hungry yet, so I'm gonna wait on lunch. And I think we're gonna go book shopping next. So the bookstore y'all voted on me to go to is The Strand, which is a fave, and it is right near a movie theater, which will work out nicely for later on. And um, y'all also wanted me to go to a stationery shop, apparently. So I'm gonna have to figure out where I'm gonna slot that into the day. And probably gonna have a later lunch. We'll see when I get hungry. I'm gonna check some movie times, see what you guys voted for for the movie that I'm gonna see. Lunch, I have an idea. The, the, the winning selection, I gave you lots of selections, was something unexpected. And I think I have an idea. So stay tuned. Let's head to the Strand. Oh, I also wanted to say I did start reading Terraformers by Annalie Newitz, and so far I'm really into it. I've only read two chapters so far, but it is incredibly intriguing, and I will talk more about it later. Right, we made it to Union Square. I know you all said stationery store, and we'll do that, but I also need to pick something up from Sephora. <laughs> love visiting the Strand and checking out the sci-fi fantasy section, but I wanted to talk about this. I read this book. I know there's problems with Orson Scott Card, but probably too young as a teenager, I picked this up and it is weird, right? Like it reminds me a little bit of monster romance. This isn't a romance, but there's this bug monster that like pheromonally seduces this woman to impregnate her with its bug babies. It's like super weird and creepy and nobody ever talks about it. And I just thought it was interesting. I found a copy on the shelves. I didn't buy that, but I did successfully find some books. And for lunch, we're going to Max Brenner's Chocolate. I thought for something unexpected, this would be fun. It is a chocolatery, but also a restaurant. And they use chocolate in a lot of their food items, including desserts, but also their savory food. And so it's something a little bit different, kind of fun. This is onion rings with a dark chocolate ranch and um, some wings that were spicy. So it was pretty good. You can't taste the chocolate too much, but it tasted good. They gave me a little piece of chocolate and I had a spicy Mexican hot chocolate as kind of a dessert. And it was delicious, a little spicy, nutmeg, cinnamon, ancho chili. All right, so I had lunch and hot cocoa. It was pretty good. Handed off leftovers to my husband. I could probably use a pick me up. So now might be a good time to have that tea. Y'all voted on Earl Grey, which sounds great because it has a little bit of caffeine. So I'm gonna go do that, go to a stationery store, and then go see a movie. Let's go. off to the movies and the one y'all voted on was Megan which should be interesting. <laughs> Oh 
oh my yes. god i followed him on tiktok and i met him i made it back home after the movie got my kids down to bed and i wanted to do an update about a couple of things number one i wanted to show you the books i ended up picking up at the strand and i also wanted to talk a little bit about the books i was reading today and megan because wow megan was a blast i really liked it a lot it is a bit absurd at times and kind of funny and campy but in a way that I think works. I don't feel like it's trying to take itself too seriously but there is an emotional center to the film that I think helps because ultimately right it's about this little girl and her aunt coming together and finding healing after the girl had tragically lost her parents. So Megan right is this android <laughs> doll who is funny but also super creepy and you know things keep getting worse and worse. I think it's interesting that this is one of the kinds of horror movies that we're seeing because I feel like it really taps into the cultural fear of the day of artificial intelligence getting beyond what we can understand and you know this is not a new phenomenon. There have been plenty of movies over the years about like killer robots or robots that are out of control this has been happening you know with fears for AI since we started having robotics basically but I think it's interesting that in this case it's a children's toy and it taps into some of the technology that we already allow into our homes and shows how things can become insidious. I really enjoyed it. I had a good time with it. It was yeah definitely absurd and over the top at times but fun and interesting and cathartic to watch so I liked Megan. Because I was trying to save battery on my phone for filming throughout the day I didn't end up listening to that much of the audio book but what I listened to this morning was really good and really intriguing. It's got these kind of gothic vibes. It has this lush descriptive prose that I think you would recognize from Roshni Chakshi's YA work. So I feel like if you've enjoyed her YA work and you would be interested in reading a more adult gothic vibey fairy tale type thing from her definitely give it a try. Again, I haven't finished it, so I can't speak too much to it, but at least the part I've listened to so far, I'm liking. I also got a few chapters into The Terraformers, and I am so into this. I mean, if things continue the way they're currently going, I wouldn't be shocked if this made my list of favorite sci-fi books of the year. We'll see. I'm only a few chapters in, but the world building is so good and so interesting. It's set in the very far distant future, technology has evolved dramatically, and different planets are getting terraformed over thousands of years, and we are following some people who were developed for the purpose of terraforming this planet, and there's some secret things going on. I am really, really invested, and this starts with a bang. Uh, yeah, so far fantastic having a great time with it. Lastly I wanted to show you the books that I picked up at the Strand. One of the things that I really love about that bookstore is that because it's a combination of new books and used books it can sometimes be a treasure trove of books that are like not talked about a lot anymore because if somebody decides to sell their collection of old books you find them on the shelves and it's been kind of a fun way for me to sometimes discover old sci-fi fantasy authors that I had never read from before especially female authors who tend to be forgotten more quickly and so all three of the books that I ended up picking up were discounted used books and I'm I'm really interested to read them. I've been trying to little by little expand and read older science fiction and fantasy especially by women. So here are the three things that I picked up. One is Fireship by Joan D. Vinge. So I think she, I don't know if she's still writing, she might be, but she went on to win Hugo Awards for some of her novels and I have never read from her. This I think is one of her very early works and it's actually a bind up of two like novellas or short stories. It's not very long that, that she wrote in different 
publications. They came out in the 1970s. The thing that, um, I, I mean, you can tell the cover looks very 1970s, but it's science fiction stories. And it just sounded interesting because it says, learn what it's like to share your mind and body with a supercomputer in Fireship, and then discover the joys and sorrows of parenthood on an alien world in Mother and Child. So the themes of this are really intriguing to me, and maybe I'll have to go seek out some other works by her, but I picked this up for $7.50 and it's in really good shape. Not quite as old, but I found a sci-fi book from 2004. This is Survival by Julie E. Cernita. She's apparently a fairly prolific Canadian science fiction author who is a biologist by training and has used that to create alien species in her sci-fi works. I love this cover. I mean, it's it's really beautiful. It's called Survival, the first book in the Species Imperative series. This just sounded interesting. It says, it's a magnificent tale of interstellar intrigue as an Earth scientist is caught up in a terrifying interspecies conflict. Sounds great. And then lastly, I can't believe I found this. This is from the 1950s, the best from fantasy and science fiction from the fantasy and science fiction magazine. So this is an anthology of short stories that were published in the 1950s. Yeah, so copyright 1956, 1957, and 1958. And it includes a whole bunch of authors. Arthur C. Clarke and Isaac Asimov are among them, but there's at least one female author, maybe more for the people who are using initials. Sometimes that can be female, but there's one person named Mildred. So yeah, I mean, look at that cover. It's beautiful. It's so 1950s and it was $8.50. Oh, I didn't tell you this one also out of print, also $8.50. So all in all, I know I'm trying to not buy that many books, but these just were such gems. I couldn't resist adding them to my collection. So yeah. Anyway, all in all, I had a really fun day. Thank you so much for coming along with me. And thank you to my patrons for picking what I would do today. It ended up being a really fun day. I am tired. I'm ready to put on some pajamas and chill <laughs> because it's been a long day with a lot of walking. Um, but this was really fun. It was my first time getting to go to the Morgan Library because it was closed for a few years and I didn't know about it before then. So that was a really cool experience. The movie was great. The food was good. I found some new great books. It, it was just a good time. Thank you all for coming along with me. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts on anything in this video and let me know if you'd be interested in seeing me do something like this again. There are a lot of really cool things in New York to do and so it's fun to sometimes create a day where I get out of my comfort zone and go out and explore what there is in my city. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings. If y'all like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.